Uh, okay. Uh, so welcome to this uh, webinar um, in the, regarding the industrial cooperation that we do from Heglos. Uh, my name is uh, Dan Lindell. I'm uh, the director of Combat Vehicles, and I will be your host for today. Um, so for today, we have a, a set of speakers coming in. We have some guests. First of all, we have we have our own uh, uh, Mr. Ulf Anderson from BA System Heglunds, who will uh, talk about uh, industrial cooperation from our point of view. Uh, we also have uh, a customer from Norway, uh, Mr. Knut Herefors, uh from the Norwegian Defense Material Agency. Uh, we will have uh, Mr. Get uh, Daugard from Hydrema in Denmark. Uh, Mr. Marcus Eck uh, from Tomek in Norway. Uh, and we will have uh, Mr. Isaac Veerman uh, from the Van Halteren Group in the Netherlands. Uh, if you have any questions uh, to, uh, uh, to the forum, uh, uh, please write those uh, uh, questions in the, in the chat forum. And uh, uh, there will be a Q&A session after the presentations. <clears throat> So with that, let's uh, let's uh, go on with this. Uh, so the first speaker out is uh, Mr. Ulf Andersson. Uh, Ulf is born and raised here in uh, Ungersvik. Uh, he lived uh, for like five years in in uh, sixteen years, sorry, in Stockholm, and where he worked as a sales uh, manager for uh, within commercial marine sector towards the Asian and in East European market. Um, he uh, returned to uh, Ovik uh, in 2003, initially in the procurement department. Yep. Uh, but for the last, I think it's 10 years, uh, Ulf has been working with Offset in industrial cooperation for various programs as an industrial cooperation manager. So uh, please, Ulf, uh, the, the floor is yours. Thank you, Don. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, why? industrial cooperation. There are se several reasons behind why Heglunds see industrial cooperation, or IC if we put it short, as an essential part of our business. Uh, we need, for instance, the, comp the cooperation with the companies possessing skills and uh, competence within specific uh, technical areas in order to, to further develop an already great product. We need the resources to pull through a demanding vehicle production program, and we need these resources in the subsequent uh, sustainment phase of the vehicles as well. It is an, uh, obviously a, a common demand from our customers, not seldomly with a reference taken to national sovereignty and security of supply. With or without uh, formal obligations, uh, Heglunds have uh, committed to, to carrying out uh, industrial cooperation for the last decades. And we have a track record which we are very proud of where we have successfully concluded those obligations in 11 countries in time, ahead of time, at value or exceeding the, the stipulated values. So for us, uh, delivering industrial cooperation is part of our daily work. We see the list of uh, countries where we have fulfilled these obligations. Again, some of them ahead of schedule, some of them exceeding the stipulated values. Uh, so you can say it's a safe bet to entrust Heglunds with an IC obligation. We commit, we deliver, and we ensure that we will uh, return investments to the local industry. Yep. This is a picture of our CV90 programs. Uh, Norway being our first export country, 
followed by Finland and uh, Switzerland. Next to that we had Netherlands and Denmark. And most recently we had the upgrade program in Norway for their C-90 fleet. In all these programs we've had the local suppliers, local partners. We can mention Hydrema, Van Halter and Rua, I guess, some of them. Uh, if we look at the performance uh, for one of the more recent uh, C-90 programs, uh, we can see the gray line representing the customer experience from uh, previous defense programs, uh, a challenging obligation that we were faced with, represented by the red line with a few milestones to be achieved. And uh, to the left, the yellow line, which shows our actual performance. And when you see the star and count the years, you conclude that we, we managed to fulfill the obligation close to 10 years ahead of schedule. What's important here is the dotted line that you see that express our continued commitment towards the local industry. Our, our partnership doesn't stop when, when the uh, obligation is fulfilled. On the contrary, we work with long-term perspective in our cooperation. Thanks. So, how do we do it? Well, there's not a one-size-fits-all model to this. Uh, it all depends on, first of all, the customer requirements. The, the level of development that is needed, the readiness from, from uh, local industry, the delivery schedule as well. All this needs to be taken into account when we start tailorizing the setup. And uh, parallel to this, we gradually uh, provide the tech transfer to the local partners step by step so that they eventually gain the knowledge of the complete vehicle system. Yeah. We start uh, in an early stage, very early stage, uh, with a partner identification. Uh, exhibitions, seminars, dialogue with the de defense industry organization, uh, company tours. Uh, we commonly end up uh, meeting some several hundred companies during that phase. And once this uh, identification phase is concluded, we throw these potential partners into the evaluation funnel because it's uh, not enough to be local. No, they need to possess the, the traditional expectations we put on every supplier, of course in terms of being price competitive, proper quality, having a capability to deliver in time, etc., etc. Uh, we do the selection and we commonly end up with some two, three core partners who is going to be supported by uh, further 30, 40 cooperating partners. Uh, during the evaluation, each, each uh, company will, we will conduct a gap analysis to conclude what is the level, proper level of tech transfer that we need to provide. And we do that just to ensure that we have a cooperation at a smooth, low risk and uh, to secure the deliveries to the customer. Yeah. What are the cornerstones in our uh, industrial cooperation setup? Uh, First of all, we have, of course, the vehicle production with the assembly of the vehicles, uh, development work for the vehicle variants. We request our partner to take full responsibility of the entire supply chain, including domestic and the global suppliers. These partners also take part in the upgrades and modernization of the vehicles. Uh, additional to that, we have a number of components, hundreds if not thousands of mechanical and electrical components where we 
reach out to the local industry to request their contribution. And the CV90 vehicle consists of a several, a several number of high complex uh, subsystems being provided by international OEM suppliers. We reached out to these OEM suppliers and we request them also to contribute in finding local partnerships. All the above segments supported with tremendous amount of tech transfer and they all together enable uh, the local industry to take a active role in the, in the sustainment of the vehicles. And thereby, I trust we contribute to the security of supply and national sovereignty. Yeah. What do we strive for with our setup? It is to, to maximize the local involvement and at the same time ensuring that we will meet the customer delivery schedule. Uh, we do the step-by-step -step tech transfer. We try not to choke our partners. Uh, but at the end, they should have a knowledge of the entire vehicle system. We provide a cost-efficient solution to the customer. And we have several examples to, to prove that our model works well for the indigenous industry to engage in further programs with BAE, whether it's BAE System Hegelands, other BAE companies or other actors in the market. And as mentioned, we take uh, we have a production setup that makes the local industry take responsibility for the vehicles in the lifetime of them. And to sum it up, uh, our IC approach contributes to sustainable jobs, keeping the capabilities both the local industry and ourselves at the cutting edge and we bring system knowledge to the country. Buzzword, national sovereignty and security of supply. With that, I thank you for the, your attention. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Ulf. Um, Next speaker up is uh, Knud Terefors, and we have his picture live there. Very good. Uh, Knud has a university degree uh, in uh, an economics and administration. He has many, many years uh, of experience within the defense industry. The last 25 years, he has been employed by the Norwegian Armed Forces with a focus on bilateral and international defense cooperation and since 2016 in the Norwegian Defense Material Agency, NDMA. For the past 15 years, Knut has been heading the Defense Industrial Cooperation Agreements. Knut, uh, we are very, very happy to, to have you here and uh, we're looking forward to, to your presentation. The floor is yours. <clears throat> Thank you, Dan. For that, that introduction. Uh, you meant, also didn't mention that I also did the negotiation together with my good colleague Britt Arastancia to the, the agreement that you have with us today. So I have good experience working with you for, now, for uh, nearly a decade or more. So thank yes. you for that. Yeah. yeah. Next slide, please. Yes, I just want to start uh, where I'm organized in a way because uh, um for us we are all all we have five agencies that are under the command of the ministry of defense in norway we have uh, the armed forces itself and you see with a, in a pile there um a pillow there uh, or uh, my where i am located in forsvars material or norwegian defense material agency uh, called ndma and then we have <coughs> what we call those who are running our estates and then we have the research establishment and then we have the security agency for Norway. So we are in, in the direct under the control of the Ministry of Defense and the work I'm doing is very political in a way. So, so uh, I have to follow the rules and regulation that they are doing and also uh, they are the owner of the work we are doing. Next slides, please. 
Then a little bit about where I am organized and when, where I'm working. Um, that is in, in, within the NDMA. Um, we have the overall responsibility for all the uh, procurement in uh, Norwegian Armed Forces. And we also have to have to, that the material should be operational. That means that we have to have the material management linked with. And also at the end, we have the outfacing or the disposal of the material. So overall, we have um, all, the, all responsibility for all, for all material within our forces in all the different domains and also linked to the F-16 combat uh, aircraft. So we are starting early in the paces to manage the, and get the material, do the procurement, put it into operation and then dispose. So that's our key element and that we are only one doing in Norway. Next please. Then uh, shortly about what this nearly this seminar is about and that is for our sake in Norway, how to do industrial cooperation in Norway and then also the solve the agreement because we want to negotiate them, that's mandatory in Norway, but also we'd like to pay, have a role to solving the agreement. So please take the next one now. Yeah, <clears throat> and that's uh, uh, nail about how we are organized and how the, organi how, how the regulation is. The threshold for entry into an obligation in Norway is that we have to be above 50 million now. But then also, um, we have to consider uh, what we think will be material that we are allowed to, to bring into an industrial cooperation agreement linked to. But we have some expectation uh, also, mainly because we are following the European um, European Union directive linked to trans procurement. And therefore, it's some, uh, some acquisition that is not uh, or, um, the European nations are not uh, obliged to enter into, into an obligation link with. So in some cases, if uh, we are asking for industrial cooperation, uh, uh, companies within the European economic era is uh, not forced to get into it. But if it's uh, sometimes it's for com companies outside Europe, think to that. So when we are deciding how to, what we is to have, apply an industrial cooperation agreement. It's most a question related to what also Ulf mentioned, security of supply for the Kingdom of Norway. So we are looking into if procurement, can this be and an, will this be an obligation or an industrial cooperation link with or not? So, yeah, I think I've stopped with that, that in that, uh, that, that on that one and you can go to the next one. Um, the key element is why do we need to have uh, start with have, have offset obligation or, or, or um, industrial cooperation in Norway. The key element for us is uh, what the armed forces is saying in itself. The, the headline here is capable force that is the concept for Norwegian armed forces. And this is uh, something the chief of defense has um, made up and he said, okay, we have the different five, four uh, aspects that we have to take care of, of ourselves. And then he also said the sovereignty and security in Norway is on Norway's own responsibility. Uh, we have the we are the, have the Article Five in the uh, North Atlantic Treaty, but that is not enough for us. So we need to have be able to take care of ourselves in the starting phase uh, if the crisis should occur. And therefore, we need to have a competent defense, national defense industry to support our. That is the key element for us to continue to have industrial cooperation agreement. I've had this cross-border trade, trade which we think is very necessary for us. Next, please. So within uh, this, uh, so this background of why we have, it, have industrial cooperation agreements, we have also defined some priority areas that we think are of the most important for both the, the armed forces and also where we need to have uh, competent defense industry. And these also are the, the eight competence area that we, when you're looking into projects linked to the top and obligation, this is also those eight areas we need to have projects defined under. 
So this is the key element for us when pro approving projects. This has to be within these eight different technology areas. Next, please. Yeah, and then we come over to what we are using industrial cooperation. We use this as a defense industrial strategy instrument, state like that. And we think that industrial cooperation in Norway is about to further try to develop the domestic defense industry that we already have. And that we also need to see if we can enter that into, yeah, broaden the scope of the company and, and cooperate with the foreign, in, foreign companies to have, have more technology into them. And also, and really important aspect for us is also that we see uh, that we are not allowed to penetrate all the different other markets. So we also have a huge amount to try to penetrate all the markets and to use industrial cooperation may be a tool so we can come into these markets. Um, and also, we are trying to look into more into technology comprehension than transfer technology. I know that, for instance, Hagelin has to transfer a lot of technology to us, but, but it's also, also in the scope of, of doing technology cooperation. And therefore, that was bullseye for us and because uh, they entry into companies and they teamed up with them and the transfer of know-how and they follow up all the time. So, and also we think that will be viable for the long-term operation, which can lead to, yeah, to uh, more good cooperation with uh, BI Heglund in this case, and we have seen that uh, they are looking into these aspects. So, and also, uh, um, yeah, I think I uh, think I stop on that one. I'll go to the next one. Next one, yeah. Yeah, here's a picture from, uh, let's see, one of the campaign Heglund had in Norway. It was a rollout of, of the, the CV90 system. Uh, and uh, I said here, um, uh, the word engagement. Engagement, and England, they did have an engage, engagement. They uh, showed the willingness to continue the track record related to industrial cooperation and do that in Norway. They did not look upon industrial cooperation as a burden. And that was a key element also for them and also for us to cooperate with them, mainly because VSA uh, looked upon the ICA as a strategic, strategic opportunity and the business opportunity. And, and uh, Heglund, they did find some good opportunities within Norwegian industry. Um, and also, with that showing the work that is there, and also the work on the vehicle or that we, the material we had to procure, so that they procured from you, you also show that you also a responsible supplier for Norwegian armed forces and also including Norwegian industry and also that you wanted to be in Norway for a long-term perspective. Next, please. Yeah. What did the Heglunds meet when they come to us and uh, had this um, challenge linked up to the procurement of the CV90 slash MEP OPV? We had some requirements in our procurement. We did require that uh, some GSA material, mainly produced by a Norwegian industry, uh, was included in, in uh, the, the, the product. So the GFA material it was an integrated combat solution which is Kongspa system and aerospace do have. And they have the remote weapon, weapon station that also had to be implemented in the vehicle. And also the secure communication system from PAL or had to be implemented. And of course, this requirement was hard requirement. We had already, it was mandatory and, then, and it was hard requirement in a way. So it was a lot of dialogue linked to it to, to get that to happen. And also they had to find an industry corporate agreement with us and accept the rules of regulation that Norway had put forward. Uh, happily, we was able to, uh, the, the procurement itself took a long time in, in a way, so we was happy to have a pretty good, good time negotiating that agreement. And also, I think that was the key solution for us because we had a good dialogue with uh, the other people from Heglund and, uh, and also in that case, we was able to commit to good projects with time 
we come into good project. He think was very, very important for us. And we had uh, some good Norwegian in, uh, industry involved with Teglund. And also, that states also that we could happily said that Heglund did fulfill that commitment five years ahead of schedule. And I don't think, as long as I've been working with it, none has been doing that in the big, big, big uh, area. So that was really good. And uh, so we are looking forward for, let's see, that was the main commitment. They still have a co another commitment for us, but we will see that it will be solved uh, with a good dialogue with us that we already have. Next, please. Yeah, five years ahead of schedule. How did they manage to do that? Well, first of all, we did start with them in the early phase, and they did a lot of work themselves. We was nearly sitting and listening and giving, giving good advice or what we can say it. But they did execute uh, a lot of participation on different uh, seminars and exhibitions done in Norway. They was present in Norway. And they did conduct visits to us and also lots of meetings with other Norwegian industry. And it's in line with what, uh, what uh, Ulf has already told, that there was a lot of companies that were involved with, but they ended up with some part of them and start to go strategic work with them. And also the GFE integration, which I didn't mention, it was a complex Norwegian system to be adapted into a fully developed TV90. It takes some challenge from the engineering people, both from the from the Norwegian industry side, but mostly from the Hagelund people side, to to manage to implement that into uh, the vehicle. And they had the willingness linked to that for innovation and flexibility to make this technology demanding integration. And also, what was important for us in that case, and that is still part of what we can solve the uh, new upcoming uh, obligation, is also we said that they, they are willing to promote the Norwegian system for a choice for possible other TV90 nations. And of course, as Norwegian, I think the system that we have implemented is the best. But also, uh, they involved a lot of small, medium-sized enterprises, um, and uh, they have some, something they call the, the Heglund uh, Subcontract Academy. I don't know that that well, but I have had really good feedback from uh, from some of the companies that uh, are participating there. It's a cluster of cooperation, and they help each other to do market assistance within uh, the Heglund system and also on the BAE system and also to all the markets that uh, B. A. Heglund might, might uh, have a possibility to be in a contract. So that is so really important for us also. And take the next please, Don. Yeah, and <clears throat> when we have looked into smaller enterprises, we have some small enterprises that Heglund uh, had to deal with in a way. Um, they are comp competent uh, companies, but uh, they need to do a lot of techno transfer technology. Uh, then they did it on the system level, and the technology cooperation to involve these parts on the system level was important for us. They did prepare partners to meet the, the requirement that uh, Heglunds do have a ring to coal camp production. And of course, as we always said in Norway, if you are going into the industrial cooperation area, you need to be competitive of both price, quality, and system delivery delivery time. So, so everything that Hegelus went in, they looked into their partners and they build them up slowly, slowly, and they did the transfer technology and they get what they deserve for that from our side. But, and also we can see some of those companies in that cluster, they are really was built up for a, yeah, a small, medium-sized enterprise and to be a really fundamental and good enterprise, which is you know, able to, to compete on, on other markets and also together with Texas. And then also did help some of those companies to be production ready. They was willing to assist and upgrade the production equipment. And that is important for some companies because some companies, smaller companies, have not do not have the best equipment, perhaps the old equipment, but that was also 
Peglund did help with that, and the assistant was assisting in the qualification process, and also so that those companies could get the correct certificate. That's also important for because Peglund have a standard, and the Norwegian industry needs to come up with that standard. And when getting into that standard, they will also be able to compete both for the homeland market, but also in the international market, because other companies could probably also will enter into any of those cooperation agreement in Norway. And also important, as I said earlier, they was willing to bring this SME to other markets, and also they did assist them with market promotion. They bring, brought some of those, those companies with them to, to business and things like that, and they helped them in, also in to make good marketing uh, material for themselves. And also they look into other Norwegian industry, which was not only linked to the to the United system, but they looked into them, them as a strategic partners, and did uh, support some of those companies to have a production capacity, capacity which was much more solid and much more better. And also, impressive for me, they had a little bit help in one project from the BIA system in the UK, but mostly Helgedunds, they did execute this agreement with us, mainly themselves. Next, please. Yeah, then I am on the on the end of it. Uh, so, uh, and also as you said down in my introduction, I have uh, I'm retired now, so I became a, what we call a free lord. So now, if it's somebody wants to talk to Norway now, they have to go to my former good colleagues, Ulva Pedis and Andrit Larsteinsker. They do running the industrial cooperation agreements in Norway now. So many thanks for me. Thank you. Thank you, Knut. That was an excellent presentation. And I really appreciate how you, uh, how you reach out and, and, uh, and explain this and take your time to do this for us. It's, uh, it's very good that you can join this webinar. So that has been uh, a, 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 we've heard now the, what the customer said. Now we will have a couple of uh, presentations from our uh, suppliers uh, in, uh, instead. And let's see what, the, what they have to say. Let's, let's see if we can get yet on, uh, online as well. Uh, um, I think he's coming in soon. Uh, yet, can you? Uh, I can't hear us. So, some technical glitches. Let's see if we can yet get yet on the, on the line. Okay, let's uh, let's go on with uh, Marcus instead. Uh, take the next one, uh, Marcus. Can you get online? See if it works. Yes. Oh, right. great. So uh, I'll skip a couple of slides then and go to Tomic. Yes. So we'll go on. The, uh, so Mr. Marcus Eck will have his presentation now. So Marcus holds a master's degree of science in uh, engineering design. He has also an MBA in uh, global management. Uh, and although he is born in uh, Sweden and has an excellent Swedish uh, uh, accent in his uh, English, like I do, uh, he, he, he uh, does his uh, line of work in Norway, our neighboring country. Uh, since 2004, uh, he has held um, a number of managing positions within various companies. Uh, and since 2016, Marcus keeps the position as managing director at Tomek, located some 30 kilometers northeast of Oslo. So uh, please, uh, Marcus, uh, uh, the presentation is yours. The floor is yours. Thank you very much for the introduction, Don. We try to be a small and flexible uh, supplier. So we are used to changing the time schedule around and always be at our toes. So thank you again for the introduction. Uh, Tomek AS special is our standard. As you mentioned, we are a mechanical sub-supplier of products and systems. I will try to make a short presentation from our experience from the industrial corporation product in Norway. 
uh, our evolution in time during that project and also the potential outcome after the project from our point of view. Next slide, please. Just to give a short background, we are a mechanical producer. We have a large variety of mechanical processes. Uh, even if they have grown during the project, we do all from sheet metal and uh, machining and uh, everything in between. So next slide, please. Uh, Marcus, do you have your camera on? Because we just have you as a still build now. It should be on. Ah, okay. But you're still on the screen, so mm -hmm. we know what you look like. Okay. Please continue. Please continue. I'll, try, I'll try to reset it. Yeah. Is it back on again? No, we just see your still build. Okay. It's on, uh, unmuted here. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's go on. The most important slide is probably the evolution and in a rather short time, especially within the defense industry. Tomek, the name stands for Tandberg Radio Factory Mechanical Division. So it used to be the producing, mechanical producing unit from the radio factory. It was world known and it was separated from that um, company in 1984. And then uh, located in central Oslo for many, many years, roughly about 10, 12 employees were doing fine mechanics for various customers. When the opportunity arise within the defense industry that we were supplying to indirectly with this direct project, it was a huge leap for us in terms of complexity, in terms of uh, amount and uh, uh, sc scope on the assembly lines. With a great deal of communication and help, we were able to, uh, uh, to, to achieve the price, the performance and the quality on the tender and uh, be awarded a sample contract. This rapidly changed it with more orders, generating new facilities for us, moving from 1,500 square meters to 3,500 in, uh, in the next year of 2014. Also, we uh, gain more employees, more machines due to risk hazard plans together with BA system Heglums, followed by uh, ISO certification in 2015, and the final delivery of the Norwegian project was in 2016. So we had a very rapid growth of uh, development and competence, um, and this has been due to a very good communication and willingness from both sides, but also being able and have the dedication to go the extra mile. This has also fur uh, further made us being able to export uh, together with Heglunds from the year 2017 after the main project for our part and are still doing today. Next slide, please. Just to show some sample uh, of how this has continued after the project was delivered in 2016, we have together with, uh, with the analysis and the demand from several customers, including Heglunds, being investing in more uh, up-to-date and more automated technology in order to be uh, competitive to together. So a robot for welding in 18, a water cutter in 19, and a pallet changer in 2020 being installed these days. So if you have a good communication, the illustration is not a selling point, it's just that together you can have a strategic uh, development together in order to improve your competitiveness. Next slide, please. So some sort of experience from the Industrial Corporation. So next slide again, please. Here is one of the uh, deliverables we had in the CV90 Norway project. On the right, we have a red circle where, amongst other different companies in Norway, where we used to call CV90 family. And we are very, very proud and humbled to be a part of these larger corporations and also had over 100 different components deliveries to the Norwegian project and uh, been awarded the selected partner title from BA system Heglunds. Next slide, please. And how this also can affect the local and national companies when you, again, and this is the Norwegian Defense and Security Industry Directories uh, magazine on the mid page, it says in Norwegian, delivering to the world's most advanced technology programs where one is mentioned also gives you a great window towards other uh, possible business opportunities. Next slide, please. 
This is a sample of the contributions we made during that project of different kind of products. Before these products, we were used to the same kind of um, um, tolerances and specificness and so on, but not a large amount. That's a sample on the locker on the left uh, left hand corner. It is a documentation over 500 pages where we before the project were used to maybe 10 to 20 pages per project. So this was an extreme steep learning curve, but uh, enabled us together with a good dialogue with Heglunds to, to move through it and uh, continue past it. Next slide, please. And not only on the products, uh, we also have certification or documentation on the level we have received together. So uh, first with ISO 9001, and after that with the ISO 3834, in good cooperation with Heglunds doing gap analysis and so on, in order to achieve this documentation of the level of uh, weldment. Next slide, please. So here is some of the uh, qualifications once again for, for the 9001, 3834 is a welding and then now it's a 14,000 when which is pending certification. Um, so this also enables for other types of projects with a top uh, level performance and result in a long term partnership with our customers. So next slide again, please. Not to take too long time on this one, but the, the, it shows a little bit of the turnover before the project. And there's a steep curve in 2014 to 2016 when the project was delivered. But it also shows more importantly, even if the project ends, like all projects, it has a bigger fundament afterwards where you can build on. So instead of being 12 people before the project, we have now been up, up to 35 and landed on 24 at where we are currently today. So it's a double. Uh, double size or kind of turnover also for the company before and after the project. So next slide, please. Uh, kind of a summary of the possibility of the ripple effects or spin-offs, as someone calls it, where we have been able to have some sort of deliveries due to the increased competence. So next slide, please. So some projects to the local uh, or local uh, industry or national industry where have high quality demands also on production, but also on administrative and paperwork, which we have been able to be more trained together with the BA system Heglunds, also deliver with Heglunds to other uh, nations, not only uh, the national Norway, but also outside of Norway, has been uh, opportunities and spin-off effects from the, from the project. So uh, before I end with the next slide, I just want to say we are very grateful for the cooperation we have and are very humble to the title as a selected partner. And we're very much looking forward to uh, future endeavors together where we will do our best part to, uh, to meet the, the, the requirements. Thank you for your time and um, attention. Thank you, Marcus. And you actually got some live feed on you the <clears throat> last five minutes. So we actually see you live now in the end of the okay. video. So. So it's, not so a people... it's not a puppet. I'm still alive. Uh, alive <laughs> yes. and, and it's not pre-recorded. <laughs> oh, thank you. That was very, very, uh, very interesting to, to, to hear, Marcus. And it's, it's interesting to see the view from you being a supplier compared to, uh, to Knut being a uh, uh, being the customer, so uh, so it's uh, it's it's good that uh, you you get a shared view. I, I would say. Uh, so let's see if we now have yet uh, with us, or is if he is still offline. Is it yet? Can you can you hear us? No. Okay. So then we continue with uh, uh, Isaac, uh, Mr. Isaac Veerman. Can you get online? I hope you can. Can you hear me? Oh, yes, we can hear okay. you. Uh, no, worries, no worries. <laughs> okay, you, so yeah, so I will introduce you first. So Isaac, he holds a, uh, a master uh, degree in economics, uh, business economics. Um, in 2005, he uh, joined the Van Halteren Defense. Uh, uh, he started as a project manager, turning uh, to a marketing and sales director in 2010. And since 2013, Isaac uh, is the managing director of the Van Halteren Group. 
Thank you very much, uh, Isaac, for joining us today. Uh, I hope, do you have your camera uh, on or is it muted? Because we cannot see you yet. Uh, let me check. Ah, I see it's still off. So. Uh, oh, there you are. Perfect. Can yeah. you see me? Uh, yes. yes. <laughs> okay, please. please. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Dan. Uh, well, again, my name is Isaac Veerman. I'm the CEO of Van Alteren. Um, today I've made a presentation that says something about who we are and what we do today. Uh, and moreover, what we've done for CV90 uh, in the past and what we are still doing today. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah. First, I will give an introduction of our group. Um, afterwards, uh, after that, I will say something about our defense activities, uh, well, which is uh, a bit uh, uh, detailed, but I will uh, move through the slides uh, uh, in, a, in a fast way. Uh, to uh, give a presentation about what it really is about uh, the CV90 program at Van Alteren, uh, what we've done and what we are still doing. Next slide, please. Uh, on this slide, we see an overview of the Van Alteren Group, which is uh, a family company. Uh, it's also my family company. Uh, which uh, the company actually consists of two uh, divisions. On the left side is the company called APAM. Uh, which is a supplier and producer of high voltage switchgear and uh, disconnectors. Uh, we supply those products uh, all over the world from uh, production facilities in the Netherlands. Uh, we have a production facility in Poland and uh, Vietnam as well. And we have a joint venture in India for the local market. Uh, next to Hapam, we see the uh, division Van Alteren, Van Alteren Metal uh, and Defense are located in uh, Bunschoten where also the, our headquarters are. Uh, Bunschoten is in the center of the Netherlands. And since 2015, we have a company in the east of the Netherlands, which is called Van Alter Special Products. Um, I will go into, the, uh, uh, into more detail about the activities of Van Alter Defense on uh, later slides. Uh, but in total, the group employs uh, approximately 350 employees. Uh, with an annual turnover of 19 million euros. So we are a uh, larger SME company in the Netherlands. Next slide, please. Uh, then something about the activities of Van Alteren Defense. Uh, as I said before, before uh, Van Alteren Defense is a supplier of uh, defense products and services to customers from the international uh, defense market. Uh, product groups include road wheels for tracked vehicles, uh, environmental control systems, simulation training systems, and land systems. And we have in-house access to uh, all necessary capabilities from engineering to production and from assembly to commissioning and support. Next slide, please. Then something about the uh, defense activities, uh, starting with the road wheels. Uh, we started this business in the 1970s when we were able to secure some uh, offset uh, contracts. Uh, today it's called, today it's called uh, industrial participation or cooperation, but in the old days it was be being called offset. Uh, but through the years we, uh, we really made an interesting development uh, because we uh, grew from a build-to-print uh, supplier uh, to a competence partner for uh, vehicle OEMs. Uh, we are often involved in uh, the early stage of vehicle uh, development. Um, and what we are really good at is in optimizing the weight of the road wheel uh, without compromising its strength. Uh, and today we are involved in many, many uh, vehicle programs in Europe, but also outside Europe. Next slide, please. Uh, then the, the second activity, simulation and training. Uh, since the 1990s, we produce uh, simulators for artillery and today also for motor uh, crews. Uh, our howitzer crew trainers are fielded all over the world. Uh, today we have, oh, this slide says 15, we have, we have 18 international customers uh, with almost 100 systems uh, fielded. Uh, and by, by 
Uh, by this activity, we really uh, developed a, a system integration uh, capability, which was also one of the reasons for Hagman's to select us in the CV90 uh, program. Uh, next slide, please. Then land systems. In land systems, we are partner for the Dutch MOD and uh, foreign OEMs who don't have the ambition to open their own shop in the Netherlands, because that is a relatively small market. Uh, we provide services for all stages of the uh, vehicle lifetime, life cycle, from new build uh, to support, and we provide our, we, our services for components and vehicles. Programs that we are involved in uh, today uh, include CV90, uh, but also other uh, vehicle systems, such as uh, Bushmaster and Fennec. Next slide, please. Uh, well, next to vehicle systems, uh, we also provide services for components. In our facility in uh, Zwolle, the east of the Netherlands, we operate a maintenance, repair and overall center for military power packs. Uh, also, in this uh, business, we are partner to the Dutch MOD, but also to component OEMs uh, and uh, vehicle OEMs. We operate state-of-the-art facilities where we can uh, really do uh, a deep analysis of the performance of uh, power packs, uh, and we are active in several international programs. Uh, vehicle systems that we are involved in on a component level include Leopard, but also uh, the CV90, the Boxer, and uh, Bushmaster. Next slide, please. Uh, the environmental control systems uh, we develop, produce, and uh, assemble uh, uh, environmental control systems, which is often a um, climate control system in combination with a CBRN protection system. Um, our systems are uh, uh, included on the CV90, uh, the Boxer, the Fuchs, uh, the new, new generation Fuchs, and also the uh, Panzer Howitzer 2000. Next. Uh, then the, the, a little bit about the CV90 program uh, in our company. Uh, in 2004, we were selected by Hecklunds as the Dutch industry partner for the uh, uh, CV90. Uh, that was because, uh, what I said before, we, uh, as an SME company, we really have had a, a build up a competence as a system integrator. Uh, we uh, operate our own machine shop, so we have the flexibility to do a little bit of the production ourselves. Uh, and I think most of it, important, we already had a business relation uh, with Eglons which uh, went back to the early 90s when we started supplying road wheels for the CV90. Well, after selection, uh, we took care of the deliveries of CV90, which took place between 2006 and 2011. And in the program, our, our responsibility was for the local project management, uh, the CTA, so the assembly of the turret, and the vehicle integration of 178 vehicles. Uh, in total, there were uh, 184 vehicles. Uh, the first six were built in uh, Unskoldsvik. We produced the, the road wheel stations, uh, so uh, the, uh, the machining of the parts and the assembly and testing. We produced uh, various uh, auto mechanical parts, uh, like hatches and uh, stuff like that. Of course, we supplied the road wheels as well. Uh, but most important, we were responsible for managing the Dutch supply chain. We were really in the center of the uh, supply chain. Uh, we knew the market, we knew uh, the, the, the supplier of all electronics, of mechanical parts uh, and everything that's necessary, ILS documentation. Uh, and we took care of managing it, so we were really on top of it. Uh, short lines and a very efficient and flexible way of organizing it. Um, and last thing, our responsibility was also for uh, retrofitting all the CV90s during the program. Uh, and, and that really uh, was, was doing a, uh, an appeal on our uh, flexibility 
but we were managing it and managing to, to, to realize it. Next slide. Well, the, about the impact of the CV90 program on our organization. In the time in the uh, mid 2000s, uh, our company was uh, a lot smaller than it is today. Uh, and the, the securing the CV90 contract and uh, the performance of the CV90 uh, contract really took our company to the next level. Uh, it meant an expansion in terms of uh, staff, we had to hire a lot of extra people, a lot of extra competences, new competences were uh, brought into the company. Uh, of course, uh, it meant an increase of revenues, uh, but that also uh, resulted in some, some real challenges in terms of uh, working capital. Uh, we had to invest in uh, our facilities uh, and, uh, and security, of course. Um, because in the time when we started, that wasn't at the right level. Uh, today it is. And in general, we can say that, that we as an SME company had, had to face all the challenges of an international vehicle program. And uh, today we know what it means. Uh, back then, we did not have a clue, uh, but uh, I'm glad that we made it. Uh, next slide. Uh, was it a successful program? Well, I can say yes. And I think uh, all of the people involved in the time and today uh, agree with me. Uh, all vehicles were delivered to the customer and were accepted by the customer. Uh, substantial Dutch industrial contact was realized. Uh, well, it, as, I said, as Ulf stated before, uh, the headlines even exceeded the necessary uh, level of industrial content. Uh, for many of our partners, Dutch partners in the, in the uh, program, uh, it meant a, uh, a gateway to other Dutch programs because CV90 was one of the first programs to come in the 2000s uh, and they were followed by other programs like, uh, like Boxer. Uh, many of our partners uh, also uh, took benefit from that and were also involved in other programs which came after CV90. And for our, our company, for Van Alter, uh, there was a lot of spin-off. Uh, we became preferred supplier for road wheels, uh, but also for road wheel stations. And we supplied uh, those products to uh, other programs like Denmark, Denmark and Norway. And we are uh, also involved in, in future export programs. We are nowadays the pre preferred to repair shop for uh, components and LRUs. And uh, in the Netherlands, we are now, uh, I think, one of the uh, most important industrial partners uh, for the Dutch Army, the RNLA, uh, and Hegloons. And for us, it was also a gateway uh, to other vehicle programs. Today, we have maintenance contracts for not only CV90, but also for BVS10, for Bushmaster, and for Fennec. So, to our company, it also was uh, the beginning of a very successful program, uh, area. I think this was my last slide. Oh, th thank you, uh, Isaac. Yeah. That was a very good presentation. Uh, it's, um, thank you, Dan. It's an impressive company uh, that you have, and, uh, and we, uh, we, lo we look forward for the future as well, working with you. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Uh, so, I, I do think we have yet online now, don't we? Yes, I'm online. Okay, good. I will just back up uh, some slides to get to your presentation. Uh, and then I will introduce you as well, of course. Uh, good that you're on again. Uh, let's see. There we go. So, um, I say welcome to Jet uh, Daugard. Uh, Jet has a background from the Danish Army as an artillery officer. He holds a degree from uh, the University of o Aarhus. He uh, attended officers training in the, in the early 80s and different staff courses during the 90s. And he's worked for the Danish uh, Army Material Command for a few years before joining Hydrema, uh, where he has been a sales manager uh, since, I don't know the exact date, you have to fill that in. Uh, yet he's also a uh, 
a board member of the Danish company Scanfiber that we also have worked with a lot and uh, the advisory board for Danish defense industry organization Sensec. So welcome uh, yet and, and thank you for spending some time with us uh, explaining how it is to be on the supplier side in Denmark for a company like BA System Heglens. Uh, the floor is yours. Thanks and hello guys. Uh, you see, the CB90 project for us was a kind of a new way. We have had our military division at that time for seven years, and we have not had one offset uh, or industrial cooperation uh, program before. So uh, actually, the CB90 was the first uh, test program for us. Uh, we were not that small because we have a yellow division as well, which are relatively large. Uh, so this was not new for us to run projects, uh, but you can see for the CV90, which is a very complex vehicle, uh, it was a first off and then saying, okay, we have never done anything with track vehicles before, we have never made turrets before, so we need a lot of industrial cooperation to carry this through. Uh, next slide, please. You see there's a little bit of a history. It's uh, unfortunately only 45 pieces as it is now. We will never know what happens in the future. And you can see we are listed as a complete turret assembler. But on top of that, we actually also welded the turret because we have a lot of welding experience in armor uh, due to our own production of mine cleaning vehicles. So we knew how to handle uh, armor, which are not that easy, actually, and you need a lot of welding certificates and whatever. But what we didn't have was, you can see the blue stamp from one of the big guys, SBAR, and then saying, uh, you can really do this. So it was a kind of step for us to really go into this cooperation. But uh, with the help from Heglund's and with technology transfer, we got all the way and we welded all the turrets uh, and we got all the certification that we need. But that would not have been possible without that program because we got a lot of tricks. And, uh, you know, it's not even if you have drawings, uh, you still have to translate drawings into practice. And uh, that was the good role of BAE because they learned us how to handle it. Uh, we were more used to civilian drawings and everything. But suddenly here we were sitting in a military project. We'd have to specify down to the last bar and screw. We were not really used to that. Next slide, please. Here you see the basic figures. It's almost the same as for all the other programs. There's a little difference in the weapon systems, but the basic on the vehicles are exactly the same. It's for the Dutch vehicles and for the Swedish and Norwegian. It's a little bit different. One are digital uh, and one are analog, but the main principles are the same. And that means that actually uh, Van Halen could do job on the Hydrema produced vehicle or Hagelin's produced vehicle and vice versa. And that means a great flexibility uh, for the armies uh, all over that you, you, you can take every mechanics which have been doing a CV-90. The only thing he may not be able to do is the cabling and the electronics, but all the other things, it is more or less standard that we work with. That also means something for spare parts. As Van Helden mentioned, road wheels are the same, whether you take a Danish or you take a Dutch. And, and you should also see this as a part of the industrial program because we're all talking about now supply chains. We're talking about security and supply chains. And that means we can use each other's spares if needed within the NATO formation. And that means a lot, actually. Next slide, please. Here you see what, what we have been doing, uh, actually, in details. Uh, we have established everything uh, from scratch, actually. We started on a playing ground, and then we built a, a factory, actually, just to do this. And we did that, everything from welding the turret, and we do the test firing also, because we got personal, which are ex-army, that are educated uh, on security and everything. Uh, I myself are, are actually a certificate to up to 203 millimeter gun systems. 
So that was not a problem with security and uh, understanding on what is a weapon system, how does it work? Uh, we also took over some of the economic obligations, but that was due to we were pretty strong on the economic side. So we could uh, even take part of the purchase, the part. Uh, so it was not new for us, that kind of thing. All you can say the administrative jobs we had done before, but again, we were talking about military vehicles, military ways of doing things, military ways of building up a sustainment program that fits to Hegelands and fits to us and fits to the Danish army. So there was a lot of, you can say, part around it that we have to get in place as well. Next one. Next slide, please. Here you see the new thousand square meters new assembly hall. You see all the tourist stands which were produced by us, uh, of course, as a part of the industrial program. Um, so we built it up, a, a totally new production facility, and we still do actually, uh, you can see a retrofit on the CV-90 vehicles in this area. We handle all the LIUs for Hagens as well. Uh, still, our industrial program is running now on the service side. And that means every year we sign a paper from Hagen saying that they have uh, invested that and that much amount, and we have been doing that and that amount of service works for Hagen. So it's, it's an up running process, which has been going on since, since 2005. So we are very happy about that because from my point of view, it is fine to have an IC program which just deals about assembly. Uh, but what when the assembly stops? Uh, we should even have the possibility to use all the uh, other stuff that we have. And that means now we can take the full chain now and then we can say to the Danish authorities, guys, that IC program is still running and we have got the skills to make that IC program running and to make the service for the Danish army. So you could say, instead of suddenly you have an IC program, which we're only dealing with three or four years, it's dealing with 15 and maybe the next 20 years, uh, because it has to be alive for a long time. This vehicle. So you can see, this is not a short time investment if you go together with the BA system. It's a long time investment for both parties. And it's a long time of cooperation, actually. Next slide, please. You see the organization that it looks like uh, at that time. We built it up a, a totally independent, you can say, organization, the military division. And uh, the thing that it leads to is that if you look at the names, a lot of those guys are veterans from Afghanistan and from Iraq and, and whatever. And we keep it up so 50% of our staff is still veterans. And that means we can send them to do any kind of maintenance task also in the operation area, in the camps. And that gives us the strength. We also take the, which are pretty unique from Hydrema. If you look at one of the gunners shooters, Pierre Frederiksen, which were at that time a private, he is now leader of our service team for all the military divisions. So he was actually taught through that process together with the BAE, learning how to handle that with spells and how to do it. Uh, so now he is sitting in a strong position because he knows the vehicle down to the last bolt. So that's also a part of it, trying to educate your own system, trying to get the military inside also. We had military guys when we did the job also, so they could see what we were doing to understand how the nature of the vehicle was. And that's very, very important because when the vehicle went to Afghanistan, they knew what they got. And we could set our people together with it down there to get it up and running. So you can see this whole game between our daily uh, BA system and us, that triangle is very important to get it very, very, you can say work together. So we understand each other. We even have people at one time at Van Halderen to discuss with them. So it also means you can say across that industry get a lot of connections there. Next slide, please. Here you see some workshop pictures, just to give you an idea of what we were up against uh, and what we have to build up. And all the test stands are built at our own factory. So, and that means we have all the technology and knowledge now to take into other projects. 
Uh, right now, we are running a couple of really big projects. Uh, we are talking about 300 uh, vehicles that we are running now. Uh, so we have a lot of that that we have come out of this uh, saying. Uh, BAE was, the, you can say, the first off of the project that we got. But now, in-house now, we are running four or five offset projects alone. And that just gives you an idea of how it can grow if you want to grow and if you want to take the jump to go into it. Next slide, please. Here you see uh, workshop pictures from inside. Now, when some of the guys said to us, could you speed up production? We said, yeah, but the problem is we can only have two persons in the turret at one time. So you can speed up to two persons per turret, but not anymore because then it gives no sense anymore. So you have a certain production capability that you have to deal with, depending on how many vehicles that you're going to produce. The big deal was here that we were capable of taking all the guys from the production and putting them directly over to the service function afterwards, doing different kind of retrofit. And after a certain couple of years, when the retrofit dies a little bit out, we could replace them on other projects because they were totally skilled now on armored vehicles. So it gives an advantage also to take other projects inside. Next slide, please. Here you see the status end activities in the military division. We started in 2007, we delivered the last vehicle in 2009. We got a service contract with the Danish Army via our OEM, which are BAE Hackland. And that means every business has to go via the OEM. But that's also to protect us because we can't know everything and we are not system responsible for the system. That's still BA systems. But it gives the Danish army, you can say, a certain way of security that in case something happens in Europe, they can still get repairs because we are here just beside them. We have programs, as you see in Norway, Sweden, and Finland, we're not directly involved, but we talk to all the partners there. We also talk to Van Halden uh, to clear out if there's any doubt or any question. Of course, we have our own mine cleaning vehicles. We have our own armored uh, vehicles that we produce where we are system responsible. We have, for example, with US, we have delivered all the area mine cleaning vehicles to US Army. So, so it's not that we have, we still have our own vehicles, but again, the CV90 project opened totally new gates for us because suddenly we had experience with track vehicles, which we didn't have. Next slide. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Say, yeah. In the end of the presentation, saying we have been very happy to work with BE. It's a very professional organization. It's a little bit north in Sweden sometimes when the weather <laughs> is bad, but uh, it's okay because there's nice up there. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that was an excellent presentation. And yeah, yeah, we're far up north, but we have proper winters, as we as we call it. But it's uh, it's kind of dark in the winter time. Although now nowadays we have twenty four hour light, so it's uh, it has some uh, some ups and downs. Uh, so I'll jump uh, forward again to uh, where we left off after Isaac. Um, uh, Let's see, a couple more slides. So I will just have a short summary and I stole uh, Ulf's uh, uh, summary slide. Uh, so what we've been trying to show you with these presentations and uh, primarily with our guests presentations, of course, is that um, we do have an award-winning uh, uh, industrial corporation approach uh, which uh, we think, and I, I hope you also think now after hearing our, our both our customer and our, our um, strategic partners and partners, uh, that we, we do contribute to sustainable jobs, not, not just jobs during the production of, of the actual contract. Uh, we keep cutting edge capabilities in, in Heglunds into the CV90, uh, uh, as well as in country, because uh, this is a uh, this is a tie. This is a one plus one equals three. We we we, we need guys like Yet the Nysak and and Marcus to to accomplish all the things that the, the vehicle can do. This is not a burden for us. This is something we do because we want to, uh, because we need to, and of course uh, we do contribute to to uh, 
in country system knowledge uh, in the way we we have this set up and as you've heard the, the speakers say as well and uh, something that I, I believe is very very important nowadays uh, IC does contribute to national sovereignty and, and security of supply I'm absolutely sure of that with that uh, I don't know if we have had any questions uh, stated in the, in the chat forum we have received uh, we have mailed some questions yes okay is there something that uh, we can raise now yeah sure uh, we have several questions touching on the same subject okay. namely what are the challenges in in conducting an industrial cooperation program like this mm. and mm. this is a question that i would like to extend to our partners yet isaac marcus as well uh, to have their view, possibly somewhat uh, from another angle that, that we find. And uh, yet, as you are on the line, can you please share your reflections on that? Yeah, I can. Uh, don't see it as a problem. It's really a, a question about getting the authorities to understand what the aim is with the IC program. And as soon as they understand it, and that means a lot of explanation to them saying, what is it really that we're going to do? And what's the aim for the IC? As soon as we told uh, the authorities that we are looking at a 30 years horizon with, cons with a considerable job, uh, both for production, for assembling and for service for a lot of years. And we are securing to, you can say, the, the lines of supply and the lines of maintenance for the Danish army, then it was no problem because they helped us tremendously. And uh, if you ask the Hegelans guys also, they will say that getting the Ofsted program through in Denmark was very, very easy. And it is not, you can say, if you have a problem, the problem is not far away from like, the telephone, that you can take it, phone up Hegelans saying, what are we doing here? And agree to them and then go to the authorities and saying, this and this and this can be done. Then. There are no limits. It's only fantasy who sets the limits. Uh, and getting all the factors into this program were not even a problem because everyone understood that technology transfer is a need when you go into that kind of project. But if you get the right tr technology transfer, then it is no problem to run such an IC program. Thank you. Thanks. So, uh, Marcus, what do you say in terms of uh, being a smaller company and uh, getting uh, uh, getting the IC in the, uh, up and running uh, from a smaller enterprise like yours? The the amount of workload and the complexity was probably the most challenging part from us. We have done the same kind of production or some kind of collaboration, but in smaller scale. So, in order to grow. Uh, with competence, people, machinery, certification, that you need extremely motivated and dedicated uh, employees and colleagues in order to do so. You have to be able to go the extra mile, otherwise you won't succeed. So that is um, both the most challenging and the uh, solution for, for, for uh, achieving it. As long as you are flexible and on your toes and willing to go the extra mile, I think you will be able to achieve that because you will have great help from Heglunds, but you have to pull your own weight. Ah, okay. <laughs> I can understand that, yeah. And Isaac, from your point of view, being in a much larger corporation? Well, what I just heard uh, sounds very familiar. Uh, okay. You have to be flexible and uh, be willing to go the extra mile. I, I, I fully agree to that. Okay, yeah, thanks. Uh, any other questions, Ulf? Uh, yeah, I'd just like to add from our perspective okay. that we, we, we can say that each program may have its unique challenges and uh, the task for us is to, to identify these possible challenges at an early stage as possible and uh, to take proper actions and mitigate them. and. Mm. I trust our our record shows that we, we have the ability to do that. Uh, yeah. What more? 
there is a question why uh, I think it's reflecting on the graph I, I, I showed with us continuing to work uh, within the country once the, the obligation has been fulfilled and it's uh, pretty obvious that we, we don't abandon uh, a partner in a well working uh, relationship. Uh, why should we do that? And there are future business opportunities domestically uh, for the sustainment phase of the vehicles, obviously. And there could be other potential programs where, where the uh, industrial cooperation may not be that heavily requested by the customer. And in such cases, we are very happy to engage with our already existing customers. Uh, suppliers, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it was a, a comment here to you, Don. Okay. Uh, thanking for the seminar, for the webinar, and uh, asking whether we intend to do something similar in the future. Before oh. summer or after <laughs> summer? Uh, well, we'll have to take that uh, that feedback. Uh, once we get the feedback from this webinar, we will take that into consideration, of course. This is a totally new way of, for us of working in these corona times, uh, obviously. But, but we're trying to, to reach out anyway. Yep. So uh, I, think, uh, I think it has worked uh, fairly well. Any more questions to, to the, our suppliers? No, or, no. Uh, there might be more questions for you guys uh, that we will uh, forward to you uh, for, uh, to to ask or to answer uh, for the for the uh, rest of the uh, listeners. Uh, so uh, a short uh, summary then. So if there are any more questions, uh, if you want any contacts to. Uh, our partners or the customers uh, uh, that we have, uh, the ones that have been online today or, or, or others, um, or if you want, which we would like to, uh, to give some uh, webinar feedback, please contact uh, Meta Wolf uh, or Ulf Andersson with your questions, with your feedback uh, and, and any context you, you'd like to have, and we will see to it that, that uh, you'll get that. And with that, uh, I would like to thank you, uh, partners and uh, customers that, that have been online today and for taking your time to make the presentations and, and so on. And, and thank you, the audience, for tuning in. And, and uh, thank you, the team, for, for helping, uh, helping this uh, event uh, happening. So uh, thank you very much and have an excellent summer. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. All right. Goodbye. Thank you. Oh.